Here you go. You okay, I am ready. So I think we'll. I've got five simple questions for you. Okay. Um, so the first one is just say your name and then how you're connected to the library, different jobs you've had over the years, that kind of thing. Uh, my name is Becky Henson, and um, I started working here in 1974 as a um, um, reader's advisor and did that for a long time. So I started that in 74 and it was about nine years, I think, of doing that. And of course it was before the internet. It was before most automated things. However, um, somewhere around 1980, maybe 79, then we started the dialogue where you had a, uh, a mouse coupler and you dialed up on the phone and did database searches. And so I got to do that and um, um, it led me down the path of uh, other kinds of automation and different kinds of electronic um, issues. So, uh, so we did dialogue searches for a number of years and then um, in 1981, uh, the IBM PC came out. It was October of 1981. And um, David Enzyme and I, he was here, still working here, he and I wrote up a, a very short proposal and gave it to our then director, uh, Jim Marvin, on a uh, buying one. And <laughs> And they said, he said, well, what are you going to do with it? And we said, oh, well, uh, we're going to put the Friends um, membership on it. And uh, that's how we got the Friends to pay for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but awesome. the silly thing cost $10,000 back then. So it was, uh, it was no small investment as far as the Friends were concerned. And so we did that. And... Um, and started with uh, computers in the library. So I think the very first computers we had, again, the friends bought, and they were uh, two Apple IIEs uh, that we had in the children's area. And uh, for a while, they were free, and anybody could use them. They were always free. But we couldn't control it very well, so the friends bought us some uh, token machines so that we uh, the staff could give out tokens and then would automatically quit after a while. And so that was very popular. And one day, we had, they were fancy too. They had 80 column cards in them. I mean, yeah. And so, and hmm. so one day, somebody stole uh, one of the 80 column cards out of the, um, one of the Apple IIEs. And explaining to a policeman what an 80 column card was was not fun, actually. <laughs> But <laughs> it was still a relatively new concept. So, um, and we had uh, computers in um, what was then a periodicals area. Um, and the, in, the really incredible part about that, we, we rented those. One uh, computer land, a store here in Topeka, rented them to us. And um, we had a letter quality printer on one of them, which was another yeah. huge. Um, Plus, you know, people came in to do their resumes and things like that because of the letter quality printing. And then I was sort of moved into a, a, a job where I was to get the library ready for an online catalog. And, um, and that took a while because we had 300,000 items that all needed to have elect. Um, machine readable formats on them and um, and it was no small thing because we'd been sharing OCLC for a while with the five largest libraries in the state of Kansas we all had the same holding code <laughs> in, in the uh, um, uh, in OCLC and so Nobody could discard anything because if you disc uh, took something out. So we had so much stuff that uh, we no longer owned that was still in that database. 
and um, or some other library took took it out, and then you no longer, even though we own the thing, the item, then uh, it wasn't in the machine readable form. And so that took maybe three years I, to get our patrons and mm. our um, materials in machine readable form in a way we could use an online catalog. And in 91, we started up, and so that was probably the single most memorable time in my in my career as getting an online catalog and odd needed circulation and um, and I don't think we had acquisitions quite yet but it was coming pretty soon after that so wow. and then after that it, we did a number of other things but in the end the automation needs of the library were greater than my skills and because I had no formal training in any of this and um, and so uh, one thing led to another and I started doing online computer cl computer classes for our uh, patrons our customers and I did that for like 13 years so that was what I was doing at the end of my career mm -hmm. so that's, that's kind of but I worked I had an office over in this building I had offices in the then tech services. We ha I had office. I've, I've been. <laughs> I think I've done something in every department in this library. So. Well, you were one of the first people that helped me. Just showed me where everything was on my new computer uh, when and, I started. And uh, installed two different phone systems, telephone systems. <laughs> I did all the um, installation on the first one, and well, not, well other than the professionals, but uh, on the second one, I did all the training for the staff. Yeah, wow. on, on telephone systems. So I got really good at telephone systems, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to know. All right, so share, a, there, those were a lot of memories right there, but share a favorite memory from when you worked at the library. Well, there were, there's so many, and, and things have blurred a little in my retirement, but uh, I think the, the day we came up on the online catalog in 91, uh, that was so exciting yeah so it was um, something we had wor we had worked so hard as a whole library it took the whole library to do it um, mm -hmm. and and people were excited the staff were excited and it was just a, a, a truly memorable day so this question might be sort of the same thing but maybe not so do you have a pivotal moment from your time at the library pivotal yeah well pivotal um, was when um, actually I started doing dialogue searches because that led me down the whole automation and electronic part of library service. So, uh, so it was the point where I decided that um, this would be a good direction for me to go. And um, Jim Marvin, the director at the time, was very... Um, helpful in helping me go that path. So he was very encouraging in that. Great. So we were thinking about the past. Now let's think a little about the future. So in 50 years from now, what do you think the library will be like? What might be different or what might be the same? It, that, this library changes all the time. It did when I started working here in 1974. It was under construction. And then it... Um, it, this library has been incredibly fortunate in having very forward-looking uh, directors and board. So we've been had excellent boards the entire time I've been associated with it. And with that kind of talent behind it, and I'm assuming Gina's retiring, I hear, um, soon, and, uh, and the new director coming in will have a different vision. Um, than the directors previously, but that's all good. Um, every director has brought things I would not have thought of because they are that way, and our board is that way. So what are we going to do in 50 years? <laughs> Gosh, um, um, I think there will be more and more um, virtual kinds of activities going on. 
there will never not be a need for a community center. So I think that would will always be, there will always be a need for uh, young people to come to the library and have a place to go to. Um, but I think a lot of things will be more electronic, or more online, more streaming, more all of that kind of thing. I don't see that changing either. I wish I had a better vision of the future. <laughs> All I know is this library. I remember when David Lehman uh, came to be director here and he said, what would you like? And I said, change is my middle name. I love change. I want things to, to progress and be different. And I said, but it would be nice if we didn't have changes for two weeks or so. <laughs> so <laughs> two weeks break would be good. Um, but that's uh, not the way this library works. So That's a good point. Uh, so, final question, simple one. Is there anything else you would like to share about the library in your time here? This is one of the most amazing, I, I am biased, I have to say, but I, this is one of the most amazing libraries, I think, in the country. Um, this library has always done innovative and progressive um, ways of thinking about the community and, and providing services. So... I can't, I can't, I was very fortunate to be connected with it for as long as I was. Thank you. That was awesome. That was great.